Today, we're going to be drawing Monet's Lily Pond using only crayons. Now, you can go ahead and follow along, press pause if you need to, and along the way, we'll also be learning all about Monet's life. So, here we go. Now, I'm going to be going at a little bit faster speed than I would in real life here, just so that I can get through the whole painting, just because it does have um, a bit of detail to it. And so, here we go. What you see me doing here is starting the composition. So I've divided the canvas in half looking at the reference, and I've determined that the bridge goes along the top half, and in the bottom half, it really sets apart by having that lily pond. So what I did was I composed the lily pond into sections, the big sections of lilies, Basically, I looked at the bottom half as a third and a third and a third with the bridge. I'm allowing this moment to sketch to kind of search for it, so I'm not drawing uh, with too much pressure. Now what you see is me pulling out the white crayon. This is like the secret weapon when we're doing this drawing. Now this isn't how Monet would have done it, obviously, but this is how we're doing it with crayons. So what the white does is it works as sort of a resistant, so when you go to color over it with other colors, at the end, we can scratch off and still reveal the bright paper beneath. So what I'm doing is going anywhere, like the bridge and the lily pads, where I anticipate I'm going to want a nice brightness in the end. So, at this point, now I'm just filling it all in with the white where I need it, giving it extra just in case. So, who is Monet anyways? Well, he's a very, very famous uh, French painter. He was the founder of the Impressionist movement. What was that? It was basically a movement of painters that said, hey, we're done painting indoors. We're done painting these still rigid, uh, serious paintings. We want to go outside and just play with our paint and uh, you know, be under the sunlight. And so that's what Impressionism is. It's just basically uh, jamming on the canvas. You're just having a very uh, improvisational moment, one-on-one -on -one with nature. A loose plan, but at the same time, not too much of a plan. So what you see me doing here is I'm just putting in big swatches of the yellow. I'm starting kind of bright to dark, so you'll watch me move between yellow, going to a light green, and then I'll go to a deeper green and some blues. And you'll see me tint it here and there. Notice the direction I'm moving my crayon too. I'm going up and down, up and down, up and down, because one thing about Monet's work is he was a, he was a mark maker. I would say that he was definitely a squiggler. And so what I'm most often looking for is to see my marks being made. So if you're trying this out for yourself, have a lot of fun trying to really have your marks follow the direction of the plants and say if I'm down in the water all straight down like a nice reflection. You can also color right over anything that will be white in the end. That's the fun thing about this. All right, so Monet, born back in old 1840. 1840, what was that like? Well, basically, he got to see the invention of the bicycle. He got to talk on the telephone for the first time. He got to listen to music on a phonograph. He even got to see the first baseball game. And so, this was a crazy time period, and this isn't that long ago. We're talking just a little over a hundred years ago, Monet was walking out into his personal backyard garden to once again paint this lily pond that we're here challenging ourselves with. So when he was born, his dad honestly wanted him just to be working at a grocery store, and Monet was like, Dad, Please, I will never work at a grocery store. I am not going to conform to that. And his dad was like, well, then if not that, then you should at least believe in God. And he said, I'm not going to believe in God either. And so you know what? At 11 years old, 
good old 11 years old, Monet, went off and started studying and training to be a real painter. Good thing his mom was supportive. His mom was a singer, so she looked out for him. But people did things epically back then, so by 11, he was already selling his uh, caricature portraits for money and studying, uh, you know, painting and classical art and already an established artist by this point. What he also had the chance of doing at this time is running into a big influence, a friend of his who enjoyed painting outdoors. And he convinced Monet this was the best way to paint, to step away from being in that crusty old dark barn and get right out there under that sunlight, let it drench your palette in colors and just take in that moment and try to get right now on the canvas. And so that's what Monet really went in pursuit of. He just became obsessed with that. And so with all of this excitement, he took that over to old Paris and began to really study outdoor in earnest and start to develop the Monet that we know today. His first big serious thing he was gonna put into a big show called the Annual Salon was gonna be this big massive serious painting and he was 25 and guess what? It got straight rejected, yo. Boom! But luckily, he did have other supporters. He actually had just met his soon-to-be wife, Camille, and they lived together uh, in poverty, but, you know, happy. He was a working artist. Uh, he made a little bit of success near his late 20s, sold a couple paintings, many sold them, creditors came, we want the money, yo. And, you know, he had to ante up, and so it goes. Now, what you see me doing here is really, really laying on that thick crayon. You can almost not even see the original bridge at all at this point, or the lily pads. Um, I'm making sure to be real dense and chunky. A lot of what I'm doing is tinting. So, uh, for instance, I took this sort of olive green and just colored over everything. And the blue and brown is what I use primarily to get the dark shades. That's the thing about Monet is he was obsessed with color and really trying to not use black at all. So anywhere where you want to convey darkness when you're doing something like Monet, you want to try to find color in it. You want to mix blues and browns or purples, things like that, right? Well, so Monet was having, you know, hard times and good times but he was obsessive, he never quit his craft. Unfortunately, his wife Camille, at the age of 32, passed away, and Monet, he lived forever with the memory of sitting at her bedside, painting her, and he has this just sort of tearing at him uh, memory that, you know, all he could find himself doing was analyzing the colors running from her skin as you know she was passing away and so even when the love of his life is leaving this world he's still obsessed with looking at how color works and how could i paint this right i mean this is an obsessed guy and so then after this the whole time he actually had a live-in muse this lady named Alice, who appeared in several paintings, well, she stepped up to the play and said, Monet, I'm gonna take care of your kids, yo, and I'm gonna let you paint. And so he did. He went and painted from a boat with his friend Manet. Can you imagine that? Monet and Manet? That'd be like saying there's a Jimi Hendrix and a Jimi Kendrix. These are both world-class painters that hung out together, and there's several paintings of them painting each other. So, Monet had a good time studying, and what he did obsessively was paint the same thing over and over again. The first thing he really did that with was a haystack. He painted like 12 different uh, pictures of this haystack at different times of the day. And then, 
Uh, he went on to paint the cathedral, the ruined cathedral, and painted 24 different scenes of this, obsessed with the light, so uh, exhausted at the end of the days that he would barely be able to stand but be so overjoyed and excited to get out the next day. And when he did, he'd be in such a frustrated yet excited state, you know, saying that I'm mixing up colors that just shouldn't exist. What is happening here? Why is this working? And so, now you see me scratching away at the painting here. What I'm doing is now I'm relieving that white crayon. And I've really saturated this thing. I've colored over everything like three, four times over before I've gotten to this point. And so that's why it has so much saturation. Now I'm going in and scratching out the plants. Now, you can try this at home. It doesn't have to look perfect. All I'm doing is trying to do the best job understanding the techniques uh, that Monet is using. And I know that he likes to show his marks and he likes to have a lot of bold colors. And so that's what I'm searching for in this uh, study here. Now, Monet, he, uh, he lived a long time and in his 40s, he actually finally did establish a level of fame after keying the term Impressionism and becoming well known for it. And so he was able to get a piece of land of which he lived on with his uh, now new wife, or not so new at the time, but still wife, Alice. And here he obsessively painted his own property. And that's what we're working on today. His property was actually one of his biggest masterpieces, most people will say. He hired seven gardeners and he looked out for every single detail that went into this thing. And on top of that, he obsessively would go out there and paint it just like everything else he did. And so we have such a broad collection of work from him, from going from age 45 to 80, and even a little after that. And this is honestly when most of his most famous paintings were made. So imagine that. He struggled in poverty and everything all the way up into his 40s. And then finally bought himself a fat piece of land and was able to do what he loved every second of the day. And everybody just ate it up. These paintings were huge too. They're like big as a wall in your home. And so they're an experience to be had. As he got nearer towards the end of his life, he only got more courageous with everything he did. His brushwork became looser. He became more the Monet we know today, the one we see on the handbags, the one we're trying to emulate now. Not a clean uh, classical painter, but now his own voice, which is now remembered forever, right? And so he kept painting up until the very, very end of it all and he actually suffered too from cataracts which we got to see in his paintings there was a period of paintings for a number of years that were blurry and they were reddish and everything but he actually overcame that and still painted more paintings after that and so it's actually truly quite inspiring what Monet has been able to do uh, with just really tenacity and passion. I mean, that's all the guy seems to have is just this unsettling sort of amount of energy and curiosity towards his craft. When he had met Boudin back in Paris when he was younger, he told him a very valuable bit of advice. He said, Monet, you obviously have the talent. That will never go away. That's what you need to remember. So learn everything you can because you'll pick up everything easier than anything else will. So why not? And so that was honestly Monet's sort of lifelong quest was just to really try to understand color and try to get it onto the canvas in a way that made one look at the painting and feel more than they might even look at in real life to get to that capital letter A, art, right? Now what you see me doing here is 
put in the final, final details. I've gone and scratched out all the lily pads. I've gone and actually given second coats to everything. What you'll find that helps is I actually took a gray crayon and colored over everything that's not the bridge or the lily pads, just right over it, hard as I could. All it did was doled it down. It doesn't uh, make the color go away. I painted, I uh, colored the bridge blue. Now I'm scratching the highlights here and there. And all I'm really doing is just looking over towards the original and just trying to really mimic it the best I can. It's honestly kind of fun to try out with these crayons. And so uh, this has been a really fun lesson. It's a little different than the usual ones. I think every 10 lessons or so, we'll do a history lesson like this where you can choose to follow along and challenge yourself to it afterwards, but it's also a great way to introduce yourself to what art is and who are the artists that made it what it is today, right? So here I am putting in those finishing touches. I can't wait for tomorrow's class. It's gonna be so fun. It's gonna be real simple. It's gonna be a nice follow along that anybody could jump in with. Just a couple of bunnies having some fun for Easter. And so let's go ahead and put in these last finishing touches here. And if you'd like to subscribe to any more of these videos, please do. Uh, and there will be a link at the end that you can click on and you know keep the party going. As an extra fun fact, you can still go visit Monet's garden to this day. It's still kept up in a really nice state. And in other interesting Monet news, there was another Monet painter. It was actually his daughter-in-law. She uh, was completely enamored with him and produced a whole series of paintings and showed them all around. And they look basically just like Monet's, but it's kind of fascinating that, you know, probably because she was a girl that we just don't hear about her and that his father was way more uh, famous. But anyways, until next time, this was a really fun challenge and hey, doodle on.